The moment you step up from a USB microphone, you're gonna need a quality audio interface to connect your XLR microphones, maybe multiple channels, and there are plenty of options out there geared specifically towards podcast creators. We're gonna go over some beginner, intermediate, and advanced options for all budget levels, including redundancy, multiple channels, and special features. We have three recommendations in the starter category, and these are not only budget-minded, so these are the least expensive that we'll recommend in this video, but they're also easy to use and are probably only one to two channels. So if you're just recording by yourself or you plan to record only with remote guests, you really only need one channel there at your desk. So these recommendations prioritize cost and ease of use without redundancy or multiple channels. The first one to consider is the Rode AI-1. It's a single channel audio interface, just connects USB into your computer and has a place where you plug in headphones. You do wanna to monitor yourself while you're recording and it's best to use wired headphones connected to that same audio interface. This way on your computer, you just choose that one audio interface as the in and out. The Rode AI-1 is a solid option starting at just $125 and you can get it on Amazon. We'll put links to all these recommendations in the video description. Next is the Elgato Wave XLR at $120. Elgato makes lots of products for streamers and podcasters and this is their first audio interface. It's actually high quality, good build quality, has just a huge knob for adjusting your microphone gain, and it has powerful preamps. So if you're wanting to use a microphone like the Shure SM7B, this one might do the trick. The last starter recommendation is actually a new entry from the company Focusrite. They've made something specifically for podcast creators in the Vocaster 1 and the Vocaster 2. You can get the Vocaster 1 for $200. It has a single XLR microphone input and a place for headphone jacks as well as audio out but you can also connect a phone or maybe other tablet device via a headphone jack. But if you upgrade to the Vocaster 2, now you get two XLR microphone inputs and you can actually connect a phone or tablet wirelessly via Bluetooth and it will be an input in the Vocaster 2. So if you wanna play music or you wanna do a call, you can actually connect your phone directly to the Vocaster 2. Of course, for the highest quality recording with remote guests, I would use a Riverside Studio, but if you wanna play music from your device, this is a great way to have that go into the Vocaster 2 and then you and your guests can hear that music or other audio clips. Now, if you're looking for just more than one XLR channel or you need more powerful preamps and plugins for the microphones you're trying to use, this intermediate category is for you. A solid recommendation is the Focusrite 2i2. This is a two XLR interface. It has audio outputs if you wanna connect speakers to it and you can use it with XLR or instrument jacks. You see it has the two XLR and quarter inch combination inputs. It has the headphone jack, line or instrument toggles. And then on the back, you can get a newer model that connects via USB-C. This is the older USB-A model. And it has quarter inch outputs right and left for speakers. The Focusrite 2i2 is about $180 and is a great second step if you want more than one XLR channel. Now, if you want redundancy or the ability to record on the go or in the field, I would recommend the Zoom H4n. It can record to an SD card. Plus you can also use it as an audio interface and connect it via USB to your computer. So if you want an interface with a little redundancy or the ability to record away from your computer without any device but the mobile recorder, the Zoom H4n is a great option. This last recommendation is edging into the advanced category, but if you need really powerful mic preamps, again, let's say you're trying to use the Shure SM7B, which is very gain hungry. Well, the Apollo series from Universal Audio has incredible preamps, but it does cost. You can get the Apollo Solo for about $700. It is powered by USB, so you don't need an external power supply. Has great features, but also the Universal Audio products come with a lot of other plugins. And you can upgrade to the Apollo Twin, which is about $1,200. You'll get two XLR inputs with those high-end preamps and lots of audio plugins. That's the device you probably see on a lot of YouTube desks or podcaster desks. Again, it's a powerful audio interface, but if you're not gonna use those plugins and extra features, you might wanna look at some of the other intermediate options. Now for the advanced options, maybe you want four or more channels to record at the same time, you want the SD card redundancy, or you want other features like being able to play jingles and sound effects live while you're recording. Well, these options are for you. My first recommendation is actually my favorite. It's the one I'm using to record the audio right now and what I've used to record podcasts for years. It's the Sound Devices Mix Pre 3 Two. Now the Mix Pre series comes in various levels. You can get a three channel with three XLR inputs. You can get a six channel and even a 10 channel. But these are a little difficult to find and they start at about $1,000. They do have the SD card backup. Their preamps are incredibly powerful so you can use like the Shure SM7B without any cloud lifter or additional equipment. And it has other great features like aux in and aux out. You can save presets. It actually has a little touchscreen on that device. I've used it both in the field and recording right here in the studio, so I highly recommend the sound devices 
if you can find them. Again, we'll put a link to B&H Photo. You might be able to get a model there that's in stock. Another option in this category is the Zoom F6. Like the Mix Pre series, it can record to an SD card. You can use it as a USB audio interface, but the F6 actually has six XLR inputs, and this and the Mix Pre can be a field recorder as well. So if you didn't bring your computer or you just don't want to use it and you're traveling, you just want to record to a device, the Mix Pre and Zoom F6 can record locally to that SD card all by itself. The F6 is about $750, and again, you might struggle to find it. We'll try to put a link to a place where it's in stock if you'd like to get it now. A last word about the Mix Pre 2 Series and the Zoom F6. They actually support 32-bit float recording, which is very high-quality audio, but it can also record multiple gain stages, so you never have to worry about peaking. If you're afraid that you might overdrive something or you're doing an interview and you want to get good volume, but you don't want it to peak and distort, that 32-bit float recording can help you with that, but it is a very advanced feature and can make editing a little more challenging. That's why this is in the advanced category of audio interfaces. Two more options in the advanced category. The Rodecaster Pro, you get it for about $490, and it is basically an entire soundboard for your podcast. You get four XLR microphone inputs, plus you get a bunch of buttons for sound effects, jingles, and music. So if you want to have multiple in-person XLR channels, plus all those sound effects and buttons, the Rodecaster Pro is great. It doesn't have SD card recording, so you lose that redundancy, but you get other features, especially if you're in a live production situation. And finally, if you just need a ton of audio inputs and outputs, you want to be able to route it all kinds of ways, the Focusrite Scarlett 18i20. It's about $550, but this is a massive audio interface. It's actually made to be rack mounted, and you have a bunch of audio ins and outs. Using the Focusrite software, you can route that audio many different places. It's probably overkill for just a podcast with a few people, but if you want to be able to utilize many, many channels, it has powerful preamps to drive those microphones that might need extra gain. It is a great interface, extremely flexible, especially if you want to use it in multiple recording situations. So those are some recommendations for starter, intermediate, and advanced audio interfaces. If you have questions on any of those, drop a comment below the video. We'd love to answer you there. And subscribe to the Riverside channel. We have content on using mirrorless cameras inside a Riverside studio, how to use a video switcher, and lots of podcast creation tools for you. If you want to streamline your podcast workflows, click the video above and we'll teach you how to automate some of those things to get your podcast creation even faster. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you in the next video.